Hello! Are you enjoying Google I.O.? Whoa, that's great! Let's hear it again because I'm going to involve you in this session. Are you enjoying Google I.O.? Fantastic! I am enjoying Google I.O. a lot. This morning when I woke up, it felt like Christmas, you know? But then I thought, I'm going to work today, so it's not really Christmas, but I don't work at Christmas. And then I thought, I wonder what Santa Claus staff is feeling on Christmas when they are working. That was a really weird thought, so I stopped that. Uh, we're going to talk today about Google Play services. And probably many of you in here know what Google Play services is, but I will do a mandatory recap for you, because there may be some people in here that don't know what Google Play services is. Google Play services is a set of APIs that we develop in Google and deploy on Android devices running Gingerbread or later that has Google Play installed. And that's a lot of devices out there. There's just a small percentage or two or so of devices that runs Google Play that is not included in this set. So it's a vast majority of the Google Play devices. Oh. It's unfortunate that you can terminate the presentation with the clicker, right? Uh, and the good thing with Google Play services is that we release it many times every year. So there are multiple releases being pushed to all of these devices per year. Now, if you're still thinking, so what's the big deal about that? Then I will tell you it's a huge deal. It has monumental value, right? Because this allows Google to get the latest and coolest and most shiny stuff that we develop in mobile technology to get that out to developers quickly. Are you developers? Yeah! yeah! That's great. And that stuff that you develop on Google Play Services API can be used on almost all the Google Play devices out there. That's great, isn't it? If we look historically, we've been releasing 12 uh, Google Play Services versions since we started with this back in September 2012. And I'm happy to announce that right as we speak here, we have a 5.0 being pushed out to the world. And you will actually get a sneak preview of this version as well. So more information on that is coming later. But it's going to be great stuff. Some of that stuff I will present here today. So stay tuned. I love Google Play services because of this, because it has all of these capabilities that you can build into applications, right? You have location with GPS, you got the maps, the wallet API, you got play game services, mobile ads, social with Google Plus, Chromecast, uh, the Google Cast SDK, Drive, and Cloud. It's absolutely amazing. You can build so many cool applications with all of these APIs. Tell them that Google Play Services rocks. Yes, that's exactly what I'm going to tell you now. Google Play Services rocks. It really, really rocks, right? And uh, we're going to do a little exercise here. I brought the t-shirt launcher with me. It, it looks like this, right? And this is probably what's going to happen. At various locations of this presentation, I will go crazy and put my arms in the air and I will say, Google Play Services! And then I expect from you... Rock. Yeah! Exactly! Exactly! Let's try that out once. So, okay. Google Play Services! Rock. Whoa! Great stuff! A little reloading there. I can just see this later. Weird guy at Google I.O. launches t-shirts at audience. Asks for rocks in return. <laughs> All right, let's get started, shall we? <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, let's introduce a new API to Google Play services, namely the Android Wear Data API, with a round of applause. Here we go. You've seen Android wearables being launched at the keynote today. And this is big stuff, right? It's the first time I'm wearing something around my wrist for the past 15 years, right? 
I've been taking my phone up and down this pocket. I think in the keynote today, there was a note that a hundred billion times this happens every day in the world. It's amazing, isn't it? I have tear marks on my left pocket here because I'm reaching for the phone so often. Well, those tear marks I will not need to have anymore because I got all of that information right here on my wrist. It's absolutely amazing. And Google Play Services obviously has an API to integrate with these variable uh, devices because you need to transfer things between these devices and communicate across them. And there are three APIs that we are launching as part of Google Play Services in the Android Wear Data API. The first part is the Message API. The Message API allows you to send unidirectional messages between the wearable and the phone or tablet, or the phone tablet to the wearable. These can be control signals. For example, you can tell the wearable to change the media track that is playing on your Android phone. Or you can have your Android phone instruct the wearable to launch an intent that gets visible to the user. So that's a great API to share information between the, phone, the device you have in the pocket and the wearable device. The second API is the asset API. The asset API you use to transfer binary blobs, images, for example, or other kinds of binary data between the wearable and the other device. So this can, for example, be an image. So one use case would be your phone downloads an image to the phone, right? It resizes it to match the resolution of the wearable device, and it then sends it over to the wearable device as an asset. That's a perfect example of data being transferred as an asset. Then we have data item. Data item is an API within, is a message exchange in this API that allows you to have data which is in sync on both the wearable device and the other, the, uh, on, on both the wearable as well as the other device such as the phone. That means that if it changes on one side, it will be automatically synced on the other side. So that's also a great API. So this is really fabulous, right? What applications will we see here in a couple of weeks? I'm really, really excited about this. Uh, and as I said, the 5.0 release of Google Play services, we're giving you a sneak preview of that. So you'll have a running or flying start uh, when, when you start to check this out. It's really, really great stuff. So I think that this demonstrates that Google Play services. Rocks. Yes, it does. It rocks, right? It rocks. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> OK, let's move on. For wearables, we have a number of different I.O. sessions here, right? So this is a list of them. You should definitely go and check them out. There are so many resources that you can consult during these two days regarding wearable technology. Let's talk about the buying experience, right? I love to buy things. Um, Buying on mobile is not very simple, or hasn't been at least. There are three components that make it quite complex. The identity component, the payment component, and the data entry. Now, we worked on the identity and payment for a long time with sign-in uh, with Google+, Plus, right? And wallet has been around for a while, too. Uh, so you have Google Wallet to pay for things. But the problem has been also the data entry. I mean, when you're a mobile device, it kind of looks like this, right? Big fingers on small keys. How am I supposed to enter my address using these keys? That's impossible, right? I can barely remember my address, right? Let alone enter it on these types of keys. I've seen people do it. I mean, you've seen teenagers. They're like, bada, 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 bada. two hands, multiple fingers being used simultaneously. Both hands, right? Completely impossible. I can't do it. Lately, I have started to using this kind of swiping moment, you know, where you can swipe the characters and they form a word. It's really cool. I feel cool when I do it also. I will be home at 6 p.m. Right? It's really, really cool. I love it. Well, the problem is that it's not easy to enter an address with these kind of methods either. So we're happy that we've released the address API recently in Google Play services. Ladies and gentlemen, you can now sit in the comfort of your best keyboard 
enter as many addresses as you want, right? And they get recorded in the, in the, with the address API. An application can they say, when, where do you want to ship this thing? It can then ask the address API. And the address API will ask you to give permission to the application to have the address. And voila! the application will get the address. Not a single press on any key, right? It's just a user interface to select which entry of that list uh, that you want to have. Isn't that great? I think this is fantastic. This is a perfect feature for me, at least. Another feature that we're adding in 5.0 is the OCR scanning of credit cards. So as you can see here, you can now press on the camera button. When you want your credit card to be scanned, you can just align your card with this frame here, and the card number will be automatically provided uh, to this registration of the new card. That's also cool, right? Because how many remember their credit card numbers? You're sitting there, like, ooh, ooh. That's not work. So that's a great addition as well. Wallet fragments. It is now super easy to add the Buy with Google button to your application. We've reduced this to be a very, very small, a minimum amount of code that you need to use in order to add this kind of stuff to your application. So we hope to see lots more developers to, to embrace this as well. And we did a little demo here that I pre-recorded for safety reasons. Um, and what we're going to see here is me going into a site. I have never been to this site before, right? Me going into this site for the first time, registering, logging on to the site, buying a bike, getting it shipped to my home address. And all of that will happen in less than 10 seconds. So here we go. So I log in with the sign in by Google button. I select my account that I want to use. I come in, I select the adjustable bike that I want to buy because it's cool. I'm buying it with Google. I confirm the order and the shipping address. Voila! 10 seconds, and we've just bought the bike. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I think that's great. All right, we're at that point. My gosh, in that case, we need to do this. I think that demonstrates that Google Play services. Yes. Whoa. Do you want to have another one? Yeah, yeah, I got plenty of these. So. Over there? Whoa, that was. <laughs> Great. Let's move over to the selling experience, right? Because <laughs> you can't have a buyer unless you have a seller, right? So you're kind of mutual dependent, even though it, it doesn't sound as good to be selling things for some reason. I don't know. This is a picture of my wallet. This is a very important topic for me. I want to try to keep my wallet as small as I possibly can, right? I'm down to below an inch, something like that. If I was to accept every single loyalty program or coupon or whatever I am offered in my stores that I visit, this wallet would probably be 10 inches thick, right? It would be like that. If I was to sit down with that kind of wallet, I would I'd kind of be tilting to the side, right? because I would have this wallet, which built up on one side, right? I would have to do a customized pocket to be able to get that wallet into my, in, into my pants. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is not needed anymore, because now we're introducing to wallet the Save to Google button. So let's welcome the Save to Google button with a round of applause. Get back to work. That's right, let's get back to work. The Save, to, Save Card to Google allows you to store loyalty cards, but not only loyalty cards, also coupons and discounts and bonuses and all other kinds of stuff. Allows you to store that stuff in Google Wallet, right? And then your applications that you can create, you can add these bu but this button to your application so merchants that you are interacting with can store their stuff to Google Wallet. That's great, right? It, it requires no more physical space, all of these things. And if we tie that together with context and location, for example, if I'm walking into a store, right, uh, then that store can offer me things based on 
what my, uh, my loyalty program is, my status is. And also, it can utilize the coupons that I've collected. Because how many of you are carrying around all the different coupons that you are being offered in stores, right? It doesn't happen. This needs to happen if we're going to have a pleasant buying experience in the future, not to mention the selling experience, right? And this was actually one of our partners, Belly, uh, that did a, a, an early integration of this. So we're very happy for that. This functionality will keep the merchants happy, of course. They can offer the things. They don't have to stand there with a customer that refuses to take a card because they don't have space in the wallet. It will keep the customers happy because they will get better offers and, and better rewards, right? And it will keep you developers happy because you're connecting the dots between the selling endpoint and the buying endpoint in this particular case. It's a win-win-win. It's the best value proposition that you can create. Perfect alignment between all the parties, right? It's amazing. Another piece that we've ad added to Google Play services to, to make the selling experience better is Google Analytics. Now, this was added in March 2014, but it existed as a standalone library before that. Google Analytics allows you to measure. This is going to sound terrible, but this is actually true, I think. Allows you to measure what is most important to you, right? And what does that mean? It means that you can put things in your application that will get reported as statistical information. And later on, you can see how your application behaves, how your users are interacting with it, how they are discovering it, downloading it, installing it, when, under which conditions they're upgrading to a paid version as opposed to a free one, when they're doing in-app purchases, etc. There's tons of material here in Google Analytics that you can use in order to improve your app experience. And that's pretty good because it will make your users happy, right? You will provide an application that makes sense to them. And it can be good for you because you can drive more revenue for, through your app as well. So that's great stuff. Google Analytics. As part of 5.0, we've added enhanced e-commerce to Google Analytics. And this provides even a more detailed level of, level of reporting. So now you can dice and slice your data that you get all the way down to the product level, right? So you can see during the, the purchasing process when a user is um, going through adding to cart, etc., and checking out, you can see what they're doing with that product before they're deciding to buy it. For example, how many users are, uh, wants to do the detailed product page before they're buying the product? Is that relevant for my product to be sold, that there is a product detail page or not? So lots of stuff that can be done here. And e-commerce, as you know, is an area that's exploding in terms of growth, tremendous amount of growth. So this is a great addition to Google Analytics. Let's move over to mobile ads. What we did uh, previously in Google Play services just recently was we added in-app purchase ads. This allows users to, in the device, directly purchase virtual goods that are advertised. And it also allows the ads to be targeted to different user segments. So depending on who you are, you may get different ads. And in 5.0, we also made this extremely easy by providing APIs that allows you to configure this in a good way. That's great stuff. Don't you think that this demonstrates that? Google Play Services. Yes, I hope it works. Whoa. Sorry. Whoa. That's better. All right. <clears throat> there is uh, an I.O. session on Wallet as well that you should check out. The instant buy everywhere that's taking place. Really great stuff on Wallet. Play game services. Who likes to play games? <laughs> One or two. Oh. I love games, right? I love especially, especially I like zombie games for some reason that I haven't figured out. But Okay, in games we've done a lot of different stuff, right? We've added multiplayer recently. Achievements is now part of games. And leaderboards. You can see, if you see the evolution of requirements, things that we've added to games, that we're really creating a great platform to build games upon. All the things that you want to have, that you have to build yourself before, is pretty much becoming part of this platform. 
<coughs> One thing we added just recently is the Game Gifts API, which allows a user to request a gift, a wish, <laughs> to send a wish request, to request a gift, right? So this could be a virtual life or something where you run out of life. And another player can send a gift request to give something to the other player. And that, of course, will make the first player very, very happy. Now, happy players are great, and if they're collaborating to become happy, that's even better because that increases the social engagement between the players in games. Pretty perfect, I think. In 5.0, if we look at 5.0 specifically, we added gamer profile. There's now a centralized profile for all your gaming activity. Isn't that fantastic, right? Yeah, is that fantastic or not? Yeah, yeah that's great. So you have a living game profile, and there you can store experience points, progresses in games, leaderboards, achievements, titles, and levels, all of that stuff. So that's good. We also added saved games. This allows you to persist game progress if you want to pause the game, for example. And you can also add an image to where the game was paused. And you can resume playing that game from that position on any other device that you have. So that's pretty great stuff as well. A big enhancement in um, Play Game Services for 5.0 is the introduction of events and quests. So what are these things? Let's start with events. Events are lightweight counters in your game. So it could be, for example, a player has opened a treasury chest in the magical room of floor two in the weird castle. Uh, stuff like that. And this allows you to look at these events and how users are interacting with your game. So you can see which parts of your games are used frequently and which parts are not uh, used so frequently. And that brings us over to quests, because these events, you can then create quests based on those. So one example, uh, one example would be kill 5,000 zombies using a spoon before Sunday, 8 p.m. Hey, guys, we got to cancel that uh, hiking trip. Yeah, it's the zombies again. <laughs> no, it's with a spoon this time. <laughs> okay, great, right? So that's perfect. You can now have quests built right in there for you and available. And I think that that demonstrates that Google Play services... <laughs> Whoa! Bah! One more. It's like, usually when I squeeze them in like that, they, they go really far. Oof. There we go. That was a good shot. All right. There are I.O. sessions, multiple I.O. sessions on play game services. You should definitely check them out. This, I mean, I don't think that mobile gaming will uh, reduce, right, in terms, it will, it will rather increase in terms of usage uh, over the years. So uh, there will be a lot of stuff that we can do in this. Activity recognition. <laughs> this is one of my favorite areas because we're getting physical here. Um, previously, in activity recognition, you could detect the following different activities. If you were on a bike, if you're on a vehicle, if you were still or tilting or on foot. But we decided that that was not enough. So we added... Walking and running. That's right. We added walking and running to activities. And now we will have a live demonstration from Adam Metcalf, my colleague, who is working as a software engineer in the core Google Play services team. Oh, or hi. poor mm. Google Play Services team. That's correct. Hi, I'm Adam Metcalf. I'm a software engineer on the Google Play Services team. I thought I'd come up here and share a demo with you that I wrote uh, that will be included in the samples section of Google Play Services SDK. Ah. Um, the, the demo is essentially activity recognition, including play games for a leaderboard and dumping some files onto Drive later so you can re recap how it went. Um, I will start it now. Game started. Get ready. This gives you enough time to put it in your pocket because we're going to do activity recognition. Stop. Oh, so if stop, you mean be really still. You're this, doing it. Yay. Uh, this game yes. is very much start like walking. red light, green light. So it told me to start walking, so I'll start walking. And it takes about 10 seconds or so for the activity recognition to kick in. 
um, because it wants to be very sure what it's actually that you're not just shaking the phone. Walking on a stage is not the greatest place for this. Keep it up. Yay, there we go. Stop. Ooh. Almost. Oh, I was moving too much. I'm shaking up here. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Start walking. Okay, let's do this a little bit more. What do you do? You're doing it. All right. Yes. All right. All right. Start running. Okay, let's see how this Almost. works on the stage. Oh no. Oh no, come on. Keep trying. I can do it. Keep trying. Oh no. Stop. Oh. All right, and that's going to conclude the game. Keep it up. Oops. Game over. Your score was 775. All right. So we can get that up on the screen when it comes up. Uh, so when the game concludes, it'll submit a score to the Google Play Games leaderboard. And because the Wi-Fi in this place is not the greatest, it'll do it offline and eventually send it up uh, when I next get connected. You can see that it has a tracking of when I hit all the, the activity recognitions. And you can even open up a leaderboard and see how I'm doing. Uh, I did not beat my high score, so I'll have to keep trying. All right. I think that's uh... All right. Round of applause for Adam. <laughs> so that was an example of a game that used the location API, <clears throat> that used the leaderboards uh, in play game services, and that used the drive API to store a file with the progress of the game. We had this slide as well. This shows you how these different clients within Google Play services was connected to the Google API client, something you've probably seen. It's a new connectivity methodology in the core parts of Google Play services. It makes these things, connecting different clients, really, really easy. So it's a very, very good feature. So now we have walking and running. That's exciting, right? We have a lot of stuff here now. It, it feels like you can build a lot of physical interactive games if you combine all of these APIs. I'd like to see more of that coming out to Google Play. And I think this demonstrates that Google Play services. Ross. That's right. OK, there we go. All right, let's move over to Google Cast SDK. <clears throat> the Google Cast SDK was released in February 2014. This is amazing, right? Suddenly your mobile device, your Android device, becomes a remote control for any uh, Chromecast enabled TV screen. It's quite amazing, I think, what you can do with it from an application perspective. Together with that API, uh, there is another API you can use, which is a Cast Companion Library, which makes certain operations in the Google Cast SDK easier to do. So that's uh, something to keep in mind. There's also an I.O. session on Google Cast uh, or a Chromecast, Casting to the Future, that you should pick up if you're interested uh, in looking more into um, uh, Chromecast. Now, Android, Google Drive Android API was released in January 2014. This is a native API that allows you to interact with Drive com uh, content of any user that has given their consent, of course, uh, for this. So this is a great way also to access the hard drives uh, for different, different users. And this is a feature which is new in 5.0, which is great, I think. It's the App Indexing API. This API allows you, through Google Play services, to report things in your app, deep within your app, content deep within your app, that gets picked up and becomes available to Google search. And obviously, that can drive more user interaction with your app, because you can actually now expose the stuff that you do deep within your app to uh, the general internet. So it drives user engagement. Great feature as well. Google Fit. Uh, you should definitely go up to level three to check out the Google Fit station. The, this station will show you how to manage your fitness data. So that's a perfect place. And then dynamic security provider is an area that I'd like to touch uh, upon as well. Uh, dynamic security provider um, is a feature in Google Play services that 
will allow you to pick up a security provider. Now, if in the vulnerabilities is detected, for example, in SSL protocol or whatever, these vulnerabilities will be fixed as part of the push of Google Play services. That means that your apps that you're developing do not need to embed this kind of logic, and they don't need to be updated to cater for these different problems. All the security things are being dealt with with the Google Play services push. All right, moving to the Google Maps Android API. The Google Maps Android API has been part of uh, Google Play services for a long time now, since Android version 2.0, uh, since uh, the version 2.0 has been part of uh, Google Play services since December 2012. But just recently, we're happy to introduce Yes, this is a major feature, I think. It is the street view capability of Google Maps. Let's introduce it with a round of applause. Get back to work, yeah. All right, this capability will allow your users to explore the world using panoramic 360 degrees uh, views, right? And they can mo uh, mon uh, work with the Street View camera to, um, to, to zoom in and also control the camera location. And of course, all the movements that you do will be animated. These are now capabilities that you can get natively into your app. So it's a major extension. It's absolutely amazing. If you look at some of the things we just added to this, uh, it's the Tubataha coral reef in Philippines. You can actually swim around in this reef and check it out uh, using Street View. Uh, another one that you may have seen before is that you can actually explore different base camps of Mount Everest. There's tremendous stuff in Street View that you can explore using this type of feature. And I thought, now when we have Street View, it's actually possible to create a dual time space, right? So given that we have location where I can register my current location, right? I could have Street View display my current location. So I could be walking down the street, right? I challenge for somebody to develop this app. I could be walking down the street, experiencing the real world with my body, but have the world well, that was recorded when the Street View camera passed by. I can get that experience at the same time. So kind of two time dimensions at the same time. And if somebody would come up to me and say, you're crazy, what are you doing? Then Magnus I, is not here. He is traveling in time. Can I leave a message? Then I could have that trigger. Absolutely amazing, right? We can build a time machine, a kind of a time machine, right? You're using these capabilities. And I think that this demonstrates that Google Play Services. Whoa. <laughs> Are you okay? Okay. That's, good. that's great. There are also a couple of sessions on maps during this, uh, this I.O., so go and check them out. There's uh, also a dev I.O. byte uh, available that you can check out on the Internet. Great. So Google Play services rocks, right? You can get the latest stuff we develop here at Google, latest and most shiny stuff that we develop in mobile technology, and that can be available to all of you mobile developers out there in the world to create great apps that are available on almost all of the Google Play devices out there. It's quite amazing. So we have social, we have activity, we have games, we have commerce, cast, location, drive, cloud, and maps. I'm happy I caught my breath between those. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to read that out in a single sense. It is a fantastic framework for you to go out and create fantastic apps. In fact, it's your turn to go out there and create great apps. And don't forget to tell us all about it. Thank you so much for um, having us in this session. It was great talking to you. Adam, come up. So we have time for a couple of questions, I think. Yep. Go ahead. Hi. So I was curious about um, it's great that services are pulled out um, and you get the advantage of them being updated automatically without the user having to update your app. But in general, like with the Nokia X or the Amazon Fire, you can't get some of these services without the Play Store. 
So are they, like, are you guys thinking about offering an alternative, either like a, a library or some other way of getting at these services without the Play Store? No, it's, they are tightly integrated. The Google Play Store and Google Play Services, it, it forms the same concept. In fact, Google Play Services is an APK within the, yeah. the Play Store itself. Um, but certain things like GCM or um, ads or even analytics, I wouldn't say necessarily, like Wallet absolutely should be part of the Play Services, but there are certain services that you can make a case that be beneficial to both Google and the developers that it wouldn't be tightly integrated in Play Services. Okay. Well, right now, I, I, I think that the strategy is, is to, to have them together bundled. Okay, next question. Over to the left. Hi. Uh, I would like to know if the credit card scan feature uh, is available without using a Google Wallet. For example, with another payment method. The what? Which feature? The, scan, the credit card scan. Uh, as far as I know, that is an integral part of Google Wallet. So it, it, it works together with the Google Wallet account. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Next question. So it's awesome to see that Google Play service is constantly evolving, but like some key APIs have been deprecated or removed, I think, recently, like Wallet Client and Plus Client. And it's not really always clear on the Google Play Services page, like what's deprecated and what's okay. not, unless I go to individual pages. Okay. So what's the best way for me as a developer to plan on how it for these so I can you know, make time to yeah, make these good changes. Question. You'll find out when you get the next SDK and get the warning messages in, in the compiler, I guess. Yeah. It's a good question. I, I don't have a good answer. But we have been looking at, at trying to get more information out preemptively about what has changed API-wise also, not only on, on the high level, uh, new APIs that are being launched. So I'll take that as something to think about. OK. Yep. Next question. Uh, yeah, uh, as uh, Google Play Services continues to get uh, larger and larger, uh, are you thinking about uh, breaking it up into modules optionally so developers don't have to include uh, such a giant jar in their project files? Uh, we've been looking into it. Nothing to confirm or deny yet. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Next question. Uh, I actually have the same question, although I... I so, yeah, I've heard of a lot of developers running into this issue, especially with, uh, like, actually running to the dex limit with uh, more recent versions of Play Services. So it's becoming, like, more and more of a pain point. Um, yep. Since you answered his question, I have another question, which is, what is tilting? Uh, I think it's when there's been a significant motion. Not significant motion, but it's like the, the, the user has picked up the device, and there's been some amount of tilting to let you know that it was sitting down on a table or something, and you picked it up. So it's I'm, not like some weird phenomena that people are doing, no? Okay. No, it's not like tilting. <laughs> All right, next question. Uh, yeah, um, I'm working on an app that um, saves um, information as files in a file system. Now, I was thinking, I would like to be able to synchronize that across several devices, so I was looking at the Dropbox API. Uh, it looks like the um, uh, Google Drive might serve my purposes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, I, would it serve my purposes? So I, could, would it be able to present the uh, information as, a, as, as if it were a file system? And is there any, one of the problems with the Dropbox is, one of the, my problem is that it requires the inclusion of a lot of uh, shared library. So I need to include a large shared library for every different uh, processor. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's no shared libraries or anything that, this is just a web service is uh, the, the Google. Uh, yeah. So the, the Drive that, API is a native API. It's uh, it, it statically compiled oh, together okay. with your binary. So there's no, it's not a web services API. And it allows you to do offline syncing uh, with the device as well. And okay. you can create offline folders and stuff. So it's a perfect API to access uh, right. files such as in a hard drive uh, okay. with different users. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it's something you should check out. Yeah, but it sounds like from the last two questions, I might have the same space problem. Because uh, <laughs> one of the problems I had with the Dropbox is require these two large shared libraries, it sounds like that. But, OK. <laughs> OK, <laughs> thank you. Two more questions, I think. Do we have time? Go for it. Are we okay with time? One minute. One question. One minute. <laughs> one more question. Okay, you do two more. This one shouldn't count towards your limit. Uh, will you shoot me with your t-shirt gun? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to shoot it? Have you ever shot anybody with it? No, no, no. Well, no, I haven't. But here, I'll shoot it one final time. Are you ready? Okay. Ooh, that's really far. It's way back there. 
that was a good final shot. Thank you so much for coming to this session.